Well, while Americans have been focusing on the disastrous Obamacare rollout, Israelis have been focusing on the nuclear threat from Iran. Joining us now is Ambassador Ito Aharoni, the general counsel or counsel general of Israel in New York. And it's a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I understand you used to watch American NBA basketball on our MET in, in, uh, in Israel. Well, let me tell you, Pat, a whole generation of Israelis will be forever grateful <laughs> to you for introducing NBA to Israel. They didn't know that before. No, this was in the early 80s in uh, METV, your television station, was the only station that provided NBA games regularly. It was my introduction to the NBA and uh, for my uh, contemporaries as well. It so, swept um, the country. It swept the country. Oh, and you made a great contribution. <laughs> well, I'd like to think it was more spiritual, but we'll do what we can. <laughs> hey, listen, one of the things that you, you have been trained in image making, public relations, and somehow Israel's image was really very poor. What have you done to change it? You, you've advised your superiors in, in Tel Aviv. Well, you know, obviously it's never, although, you know, I'll be glad to take credit for it, but it's really not uh, just the work of one person or, or one organization. It's the collective of the people that care about Israel. Mm -hmm. It's the Jewish establishment. It's the Christian world yeah. that cares about Israel. And what we did simply, and I think it happened after 9-11, pro probably as a result of 9-11, we started communicating effectively Israel's um, advantages to the mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. so that the world will see how Israel can be relevant uh, to the quality of life of every person. Oh, yeah. Let me just mention the strong bond that we have between Israel and the United States. One of the manifestations of it is the fact that over the years, since 1951, $40 billion worth of Israel bonds were invested in Israel by American people, most of them mm -hmm. Jewish, but there's a big portion of that that comes from non-Jewish uh, people as well. Mm -hmm. All right, let, let's go to the thing that's on everybody's hearts. Um, there's some report that maybe within a few weeks, Iran is going to have enough fissile material to make a bomb. Is that what's your understanding? Could you elaborate on that? Look, ultimately, uh, and we're fully aware of all the gestures made by Iran recently, ultimately they will be judged by their deeds and not only by their words. Uh, I believe that we will know in the next several months whether this particular regime is serious about um, um, stopping its, its, its nuclear program. But here's the problem. Before we begin the discussion mm -hmm. about the problem uh, with nuclear Iran, uh, I believe we should look more seriously at what the current regime is doing uh, before they have nuclear weapons with conventional military oh, capabilities. What, what are they doing? They're instigating hmm. violence and instability all over the world, from Latin America through North Africa to Central Asia, certainly in the Middle East. Today, today is the anniversary uh, to the seizure of the American Embassy in Tehran in 1979, hmm. October, October 4th, it's today, I believe. And, um, and we have to understand that the Iranian regime is an apocalyptic regime that is interested in the dissemination of the so-called Islamic revolution throughout the world. And they do it with or without nuclear weapons. Mm. They're doing it because it's part of their ideology. The current head has bragged that uh, because of his soft soap, that uh, the West uh, was quiet and they were able to move forward with development of their program uh, without the sanctions that uh, had hindered them before. Is that pretty much the case? We believe that the reason why they made the current gesture, the so-called charm offensive, is because the sanctions are working. Mm -hmm. And we believe that as long as we have the combination of, on the one hand, strong, biting, crippling sanctions, and on the other hand, the presence of a real military option on the table, real military threat, the combination of the two will produce the result that we're looking for. The biggest mistake that we, the West, can make is by easing the tensions at this point. Mm -hmm. All right. 
But they really want to destroy, at least under Ahmadinejad, there was no question. He believed in the return of the Mahdi. He believed in the, there had to be some violence and destruction before the Mahdi came. And he was perfectly willing to annihilate Israel and said that. Is that enough of an existential threat to, to take military action? Look, there's no doubt that we view Iran's plans and uh, aspirations and ambitions as the number one existential threat to our country. However, at the end of the day, Iran is not just Israel's problem. Mm -hmm. We believe Iran poses a threat to the entire Western civilization. How many of our viewers know that Iran is the only country in the whole world mm -hmm. that has a full governmental agency titled the, the Ministry for the Exportation of the Islamic Revolution? They have only one job, and that is to export terrorism, to agitate and instigate trouble wherever mm -hmm. they go. And so we're looking at this and we say, this is not just Israel's problem. The world doesn't have the luxury of allowing nuclear Iran. Once Iran becomes nuclear, uh, they will not only become untouchable, but they will spark almost overnight a regional nuclear arms race. Well, you know, the Saudis have just backed off. They said the Americans are not very reliable partners anymore, and we're going to go our way. But one of the problems was the Saudis are afraid of Iran, and they wanted America to take bolder action. We're not doing it. Though. You know, Pat, it's interesting that Rouhani's uh, latest uh, statements actually created new divisions in the Middle East. Um, you find on the side that is opposing Iran's nuclear ambitions not only Israel, not only the Western world, but also many Arab countries. You mentioned Saudi Arabia, but mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia is not the only Arab country that is very concerned with Iran's nuclear ambitions. So I think there is hope that if we will continue with this tough, strong regime of sanctions, um, coupled with the uh, presence of a real military threat on the table, so that the Iranians will be convinced that the world is not only able to strike, but is also willing to strike if needed, then I believe the combination of the two will actually produce the result we're all looking when for. When you say the world willing, there's only one country willing, and that's Israel. Do you think anybody else is willing to strike them? Well, again, um, we just happen to live in that part of the world. <laughs> you know, as, as our late Prime Minister, Itzhak Rabin, who's uh, today's, again, the um, commemoration for mm -hmm. his assassination, he used to say, uh, that, what can I do? He said, we live in a lousy neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I think, that, I think that we certainly recognize that we live in a very difficult part of the world. However, again, we don't think Iran is just Israel's problem. Mm -hmm. I think Iran poses a threat to the entire Western civilization. No question. Thank you for being with us. Well, thank you for having me. Thoughts and prayers are with your nation during this difficult day. Thank you. Maybe the neighborhood will clean up. Oh, let's hope so. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you.